I guess I'll begin. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Freeman. I'm one of the I'm a third year going to fourth year undergraduate student in uh, Professor Elliott's reading course. And so today I will be presenting a four step proof on the Pontryagin duality term. And so without further ado, let's begin. So just uh, as a preamble, let's set up some notation. So throughout this talk, G will always be a locally compact abelian group. And um, we will represent G dual, the dual group of G with a hat. And uh, well, our lambda will always be some harm measure on G or G dual. And if we write, for example, if X is in if X is an element of G, and we write uh, the X that's short hand for D lambda X, and so I think this is these will stay constant throughout the talk. So we begin by describing a natural map between a group G and this bidual. We'll call this map, we'll call this map phi. And this map takes X into eval X, which is, which is an element of the bidual. And eval X, as the name suggests, will evaluate a character on X. So for example, eval X of chi will be equal to chi of x. And uh, one, one can verify that phi, one can verify that phi is a homomorphism. And so the Pontryagin duality theorem says that phi is a topological group isomorphism. And to and we will prove this in four very straightforward steps. Namely, we'll just prove injectivity, surjectivity, continuity of phi, and of course, phi inverse to be cont continuous. And so we'll begin by exploring the structure of the of the dual of G. And namely, we'll begin by proving a theorem that the dual of G can be identified with the spectrum of L1 of G. And so we begin by constructing a mapping between the two, and we will prove that um, we have a we have a homeomorphism. And so the map is as follows. Uh, forgive me, I will use the same notation phi. So phi is a map from G hat to a spectrum. We'll just put sigma to represent this spectrum here. And this will this map will be as follows, defined as follows. So phi phi of chi of f, so f where f is uh, an element of L1 will be given by the Fourier transform. Or, or we can write it as f hat of pi. And so we will first prove that uh, this map is injective. And so by the Reese representation theorem, we know that um, we know that for all for all lowercase phi in um, L1 dual, uh, there exists a unique um, there exists a unique function L infinity. There exists a unique function L infinity such that phi of f is equal to integration against u. And so we can see that um, for every And so we can see, and so we want this u, unique u, to be a character. And so we can do this in, um, we can do this in two ways. We, we, or sorry, we can do this by writing phi in two different, in two different ways. So um, I, guess, I guess I'll write it here, number one. We can do this by representing writing phi f convolved with g in two different ways. Uh, number one, the first way is just straightforward, just expanding what phi is. So the integral of u f convolved u of x f convolved of g of x dx, and uh, we expand this part here 
this will equal to u of x integral uh, f of y, let's say, g y inverse x dy dx, um, exchanging. Uh, so I, I assume we we can exchange these integration. Uh, the yeah, we can exchange the in, uh, the integrations. So we can do u of x f of y g y inverse x dx dy. And so here we can um, group together the x terms. So u of x g y inverse x. So we can integrate this. And this right here is, uh, if we see what phi is, this right here is the integral phi of, uh, I'll write, I'll write, um, I'll write g of y, put the y here as in, to be defined as g y inverse x. So this is just shorthand for uh, this function here. So the, the left translate. Um, so fy dy. So this is the first, um, this is the first way we're going to calculate uh, phi of f convolved g. The other way we can exploit that um, phi, we can exploit the multiple property of phi. So, uh, I'll write it here. So, number two, f convolve g f, which is going to give us. Okay, so now if we look at number one and number two, or sorry, number one and number two, we can um, we can see that we have, let me copy this here maybe. So this is also equal to by number two. So from here, we can see, we can see what u of x is. So u of x should be phi gy over phi of g, just by comparing how the integrals are performed. And um, and because phi is automatically uh, phi because phi is um, not actually in L one dual; it's more so in the spectrum of L one. So we, uh, phi is automatically continuous, and we can choose g to be um, a continuous function, and so, or sorry, this should be x, because, and so uh, u here is continuous, and so therefore it remains to show that u is a character, namely u is in uh, g hat. Oh, sorry, and, and uh, but by the resource representation theorem, because that there exists a unique u, this means that automatically um phi is injective. I think you were right before that it should be a y because your function of g should depend from y. If you define x is y minus one x, it should depend from y. Right? Oh, sorry. I think it's because um here is dy and then I wrote here. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, sorry, sorry, but yeah. So let's let's make a checklist of what we've done. We first we proved uh, injectivity, as uh, na it naturally falls out from the research representation theorem. We've shown that u is continuous, and so now let's um, and so now let's take a look at surjectivity. So we want we it, it it suffices to show that u is a character, and so 
we can manually check, first of all, that uh, u satisfies uses, first of all, is a homomorphism. And so we will use what we've written here. Uh, we will use the formula we've derived for u here. So u of x, y is it going to equal phi x, y, g over phi g. And phi x, y, g over phi g. And um, we, can, we can multiply maybe both sides by, we can multiply both sides by phi g, y. So phi g of y times g of y. And so, sorry. And so if we look at um, this divided by this here, we know that this will equal to this will equal to u of y. Um, this divided by this just by referring to the formula above. And so this will. Oh, sorry, yes. u of x and uh, multiply by phi gy over phi g, which is u of x times u of y. Thank you. And if we replace x, y with um, the identity element, we can sh we can show that uh, it maps identity identity. And so, the only thing that remains is to show is to show that to show that u of x is always equal to one, and is to show that u of x is always equal to one. And so. And so because u is a homomorphism, um, we, ha we have u of x to power n equals to u of x power n, like this. And this should, and because u is our, an L infinity function, which is uh, essentially bounded, we, we know that almost everywhere um, u of x must be less than or equal to one. And if we replace x with one over x, then we also know that u of x should be also should be greater than equal to one, and therefore um, u of x must be a character. Okay. Oh, and. Uh... Oh yes, and um, so we've proven injectivity and surjectivity, and we also we have proven injectivity and surjectivity, um, proving that phi is continuous uh, is a is a single net argument, uh, proving that the inverse is continuous uh, is a slightly harder, which for the sake of time, I believe, I will leave as an exercise. And so, and so. Here we've established a homeomorphism between between g hat and and the spectrum of L one of g. So there are some nice consequences that uh, that come out of this, namely one of which is that you can with this identification you can see that the Fourier transform is is nothing but the Galpin transform. Uh, with this identification, and um, the, the the good thing about that is, say we want to prove that the good thing about that is, say we want to prove that um, the dual group of a discrete group is compact, then you can use some, but you can pull from Banach algebra theory to with this identification to prove that. And so, let's begin with our of actually. Proving the Pontryagin duality theorem.
So let's first let's first prove that if phi if phi is a bijection, then it is a homeomorphism. Oh yes, I first proved that uh, we have this identification. No, that's a preamble step. And so, if I is a bijection, then we have we then we have a homeomorphism. And so, part one. Phi can be shown to be continuous uh, with a net argument using this identification. And so for the sake of time, I believe we can we can skip this to be to the more interesting case of proving that phi inverse is continuous. So suppose suppose that we have um, Sure. Uh, yeah, so so suppose Suppose we have a net phi x alpha converging to phi x. This means that this means via this identification. That This means via this identification that there exists a character such that if we integrate against it, we get this convergence. Where for all f in let's say L one of G hat, we can relax this a bit and we can relax this a bit into L one intersection L two, so that we can uh, apply for in for inversion transform uh, for inverse Fourier transform. Oh, sorry. So we can apply for in uh, inverse Fourier transform. Um, and elements of G, uh, elements of G. Oh, sorry, I should have specified. Yep. So there we, there we go. So um, noting that let's remove let's remove the compass conjure here and just bring it inside. And here we have um, inverse Fourier transform. And so we can so we can see that uh, there exists some G such that G hat equals F and and that G of X alpha inverse converges to G of X inverse, sorry. 
and so um, because because we can choose g to be continuous, we have we have that x alpha inverse converts to x inverse, and since inversion is continuous, we have uh, the following convergence, and therefore and therefore phi inverse is continuous. Because surjectivity um, is a little more technical, I will finish off with the proof of injectivity and maybe sketch the proof for surjectivity of phi. Oh, sorry. I, I meant like it's it's um it was more straightforward than B, so I skipped it in the interest of time. That's right, but but so let's let's call this so let's call this step three and call these two steps one and two because you can prove that uh, without assuming that phi is injected, that phi and phi alpha approaches phi x, uh, that that implies x alpha approaches x. Well, in particular, that means if x equals, the phi x equals phi y, then x equals y. That's a special case. Mm -hmm. So uh, if this proof is, we just, I, I don't see where in this proof that's your own line for D. If you would actually use injective. You're right, I guess. Okay, well, then you're finished with the uh, injection. It's a special case of continuity. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, of, 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 of continuity of the inverse stated this way. Mm -hmm. If the inverse exists, that means that in particular, this implies the inverse. I see. Uh, where it's implied, where, where it happens. Um, anyway. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, sure. So then I will spend the remaining minutes sketching out the proof for surjectivity. Uh, okay. So let's define. The annihilator A, A G hat H, to be the to be the set of all characters in G hat, such that such that they are trivial on H. And so the main idea of proving the proof of surjectivity that we'll present is number one, we'll prove, we'll first prove that uh, surjectivity holds on if G is compact. Next, we'll prove that surjectively holds if G is compactly generated. Next, we claim that for a compactly generated subset or subgroup H of G, we, are, we claim that the, the image of H under phi is this annihilator here, G hat, double hat, A, G hat, H. 
the reason why we do this is that for the final step to prove surge activity, for every F in the Baidu, we wish to find, we wish to generate, uh, we wish to generate such an H such that F lies in the set. And if we can do this, then we have proven search activity. And so for, for the, in the interest of time, I will not, uh, per, I will not follow, follow, follow through with these steps, but uh, this is the general outline for search activity. Yeah, but what, you're, you're, you're not going to cover all the steps, you're not going to discuss all of them. Uh, no, I think I think that my time's up. Are you going to discuss the easy ones or the difficult ones? I guess I guess I'll briefly discuss each one, like okay. thirty seconds each, um, if that's okay. So, so I guess I'll step one. You can um, directly prove. Step two, you invoke. A structure theorem of compactly generated groups, namely G must be isomorphic to for us the product of the reals, the integers, and some compact group F. And with this, if you can if you can calculate what the duals of R, Z, and R, R and Z is, um, you will know that if, if you if you take the dual twice, you get back to what you have originally, uh, up to isomorphism. And we know that um, if we know number one, which is that phi is surjective for compact groups, then we've essentially proven the duality theorem for compact groups. So we know how to treat F here. For step three, for steps three and four, there are, um, for step three and four is, so for step three, it's a straight out calculation. I have I have a really long page here just for step three and four. So these they they are I'd say they are more technical than than uh, interesting. Step four is even more technical. Yes, step four is more technical than step three. Oh, so step four is that for for any f in the bidual, we can we wish to find a compactly generated subgroup H of G such that F lies in this annihilator, which we know is the range of phi under uh, under H. So so for step four. What is going to? Or subset. That, that's right. Well, I asked him just now if it meant it's generated by a compact subject. Sorry, I, I meant subset. Sorry? I'm, sorry, I meant subset. Subset? Yes. Well, that's what I assume. Yes, but I'm just saying that that's uh, a joke. I'm oh, sorry, it's a funny joke because uh, uh, you're. You want to prove that that is in G. Yes. But then, of course, then it's in a kind of, it's in a compactly generated subgroup. It's in a subgroup generated by a single element, namely itself. So I, sorry, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't follow. I, I want to prove that F is, can be found in. But, but uh, you don't know it, if you know you don't. It's just by a subgroup of G, right? I don't know what, say it, tell me again, but. but 
Right. Because that thing that that is the range of P of H. So then we need to that we can find the range such that the P of H is equal to F. So P is rejected. Yes. F is in P of H, so there is an H in capital H, so that F is P of H. Okay. Okay, well, that's so we Yeah. Well, I guess one more comment about step four, just to clear things up. The, the reason why this helps is that eventually we can boil the problem down to finding. So for so we can boil the problem down to for any for any subbasis element of, um, of say, G double dual, subbasis element as in uh, P, K, U, where, where K is compact set, U is the open open set, so compact open topology, like the subbasis. So for any subbasis element, if we can find, um, if we can find, a compactly generated subgroup H such that, let's say, A, A G dual H is contained in this subbasis element, then uh, it actually turns out that this is sufficient to prove number four. Where does step two go to? Uh, step two. Step two. Oh, so it's, if step two is used to step play proof step three. That, 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 yeah, we, we, we can use this to prove that um, if G is compactly generated, then phi must be surjected. It's just purely by the structure theory. Okay. But, uh, okay. Or a uh, compact group F. Or sorry, I should have probably write K. Or the well, yes, yes, because uh, you can directly calculate what the dual of R and Z is, and for comp the compact case, it's um, not too hard to prove. I don't think. You're saying that somehow it then reduces to the case of R, R Z, and Okay. Yes. This is a somewhat elaborate procedure involving the double of the island. Yes. Of course, step one was the compact. Uh, yeah. So the real line is that, well, we can say that we can do that. That's not the uh, That's not uh, that's not the uh, same. Yes, subset. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then step one will take care of R and Z, but those are compactly uh, generated. Mm -hmm. No, uh, huh? step one is compact, not compact generated. So it's showing it for compact generated. 
knowing the that is known for God. So in oh. step one, you only pass Chikara, which cover the thing. You mean this? Yeah, but you want to double do that. Yeah, so um, it seems to me you've left out what you've left out R and Z. So R and Z are complex in the system. Yes, I, I guess I, I have left yeah, it out. You didn't state it separately for R and Z. All right. I, I guess I we, we first have to do the calculations for RNZ. Um, that's uh, we first have to calculate what the dual is, what the by dual is for RNZ. Okay, so you might, might be technical non trivial, but it's only one two. Right. Okay. Okay, but this is uh, pretty good for half an hour. Well, all right, let's, let's make it speaker. Uh, yeah.